Hi, this is Abhishek. I will take you through the concepts of corporate finance. This is your study session 11. It has six readings. Let me start with the introduction first. There are three main actors in the economy. The first one is households. Then there are firms. And there are financial intermediaries. So the households provide human capital to the economy. These are households. They provide their labor or we can say human capital to firms which gives them wages. They spend some and then they save Their savings go to financial intermediaries, which are mostly banks and they funnel this to firms. This is called financial capital. So this is how broadly the dynamics of these three actors work. Let us look at the objective function in corporate finance. What is the main objective of the firm? If you look at the classical viewpoint, they mostly focus on maximizing the value to the stockholders or shareholders. Van Horn, Brillet and Myers, Copeland and Weston, Brigham and Gapinski, all of them have talked about maximizing the stockholder wealth which later translates into maximizing the share price. If you look at this objective of maximizing shareholders wealth, this is a narrow objective. According to modern theories, The larger objective is to maximize the value of the firm. All other goals are intermediate ones. The final objective is to maximize the value of the firm. So who have the claims on the firm? Who gain from the value of firm when it rises? If we look at various stakeholders, they are bondholders, stockholders, managers and employees, customers and suppliers, government and society as a whole. All of them gets benefited when the value of the firm rises. Let us look at the case where everything goes well. So managers are at the center. When the stockholders have the capability to hire and fire managers, through board of directors, they have control through annual meetings. Their wealth will be maximized by the managers. Similarly, in the case of bondholders who lend the money to the company, their interest will be protected by the managers. For examples, the managers will not take excessive risk which are detrimental to the bondholders. Similarly to the society, the social costs are very minimal or none. For example, related to pollution, etc. in the neighborhood. And these costs are traceable to the firm. Finally, the financial markets. If the markets are efficient, they will reflect the true value of the share, true value of the firm, and managers need to reveal information honestly and timely in order to achieve this objective. Let us look at the other case where things can go wrong. So what are the risks associated? If the stockholders have very little control over the managers, 
they will try to put their interest above the stockholders. Similarly, the bondholders, they also have risk that managers might take some risky projects where the bondholders are unnecessarily exposed to default risk. Similarly, there are social costs to the society and sometimes they cannot be even traceable to the firm. Finally, if the managers are not reporting timely or they are delaying or they are misleading the markets, the markets may not reflect the correct value of the share and in turn correct value of the firm. So what are the lessons? First, the interests or objectives of decision makers in the firm can conflict with the interest of stockholders. Or the second one, bondholders are not protected against expropriation by stockholders. Third, the financial markets may not op operate efficiently and thus the stock prices will not reflect the true value of the firm. And finally, the social costs are very significant. So in any of these cases, the theory, traditional theory will break down. So what is the modified objective function? If the firm is publicly traded and the markets are efficient, in addition to that the interests of bondholders are protected. So this is the ideal case. In this case maximizing the stock price is the main objective which will also ensure that firm value is also maximized. If we look at the second case, when the firm is publicly traded but the markets are inefficient whereas the bondholders interests are protected. In that case, the objective becomes to maximize stockholders wealth because we know in inefficient markets, the stock price are not reflecting true value of the firm. In third case, when firms are publicly traded, markets are inefficient and the interest of bondholders are not protected. In this case, we need to look at maximizing firm value. Though stockholder wealth and stock prices may not be maximized at the same time. And in the final case, if it is a private firm, then maximizing stockholder wealth if lenders are protected or firm value if the lenders are not protected. That becomes the main objective function of the firm. Let us move to the next slide. Decisions in corporate finance. There are three major decisions. One is investment. second is finance and third is dividend. Let us look at the investment decision first. As we know that every business has limited resources which need to be put very carefully and efficiently in order to generate revenues and profits. So the investment decision is the one where we need to choose whether there are existing opportunities for investment and how much money has to be put in those investments. In order to make this decision, we need to look at two things. First is the rate of return which we need to generate on the investment considering the risk associated with that particular project. And the second one is how to measure this return on investment. The main problem is the cash flows may not be 
exactly same as the accounting earnings which varies over the period of time. The second important decision in corporate finance is the financing decision. There are two major sources, debt and equity. Any project could be funded by either of these two or a mixture of them. So we need to determine what is the right mix of debt and equity so that our financial decision is sound. Even within debt, there could be two types of financing. One could be short term and second is long term. From another angle, there are two kinds of debt, fixed rate and floating rate of interest. So that depends on our purpose. We need to make a decision whether fixed or floating is more suitable for our project. And finally, the dividend decision. When company makes profit, it has two choices. One, it can share the profit with these shareholders in terms of dividend or buying back shares. And the second option is to retain the profit and reinvest. For reinvesting, we need to have some viable and profitable projects. In case we do not have any such projects in mind, the best option is to share the profit or pay dividend to the stakeholders. So all these three decisions try to achieve maximum value for the firm. Whether it is investment, financing or dividend decision, main objective is same to maximize the value of the firm. In addition to these three, the sound corporate governance practices, for example, more number of independent directors, more number of meetings, on critical issues etc and effective risk management system they also add value to the firm for valuation purposes we try to link these inputs to our valuation models so that we can reach the best corporate finance decisions and the ultimate objective is to maximize firm value so our good decisions on investment, financing and dividend, they all lead to the increase in value of the firm. Let us look at the big picture now. These are the basic principles of corporate finance. We just talked about them. First one is investment decision, financing decision and the dividend decision. In case of investment decision, we are comparing the return with hurdle rate which is a minimum acceptable rate. So the hurdle rate will be calculated based on the financing mix at what rate we have been borrowing and what is the expected rate of return on equity and the risk of the particular project. For example the riskier is the project the more is the hurdle rate and finally is the return. They are measured based on time weighted principle. The values are based on cash flows. We look at the incremental returns and they reflect all the cost and all the benefits. Finally the comparison of these two will help us in making investment decisions. Now let us look at the financing decision which include the correct financing mix of debt or equity. So the mix includes debt and equity which will eventually determine the hurdle rate and cash flows. 
and the type of financing which says the financing has to be matched with the asset for example if we are buying a long term asset long term machine which say works for 20 years the financing could be long term but if the life of machine is just 2 years then we should not employ long term borrowing for that and the third decision the dividend decision if there are sufficient investment opportunities which can earn us more return than hurdle rate then we go with the investment and not paying the dividend if there are no such projects then we go ahead and pay the dividend so this was about the introduction of corporate finance thank you